Okay, welcome back to Project Beep Beep. If you look in this box, the contents of this box is about a weekend's worth of work. There's the entire uh, front drum system and uh, the two spindles. So, you know, I tried, uh, all of my motorhead buddies were saying, oh, you just take a hammer and you hack the, or you whack the uh, tie rod in, and you hit the knuckle here, and things just come off. I spent, or I should say, I wasted two hours Friday just trying to get the tie rod in and steering knuckle off. Trip down to EO local O'Reilly's. Uh, there's an old timer that works there. I really like the guy. And we got to talking. He said, well, buy a Pittman arm puller and, of course, a tie rod end remover should do the job. And I have to say he was right. Uh, now, these uh, performance tools that O'Reilly sells, I'm going to see if they're going to honor their lifetime warranty. Of course, I've only had the tools 48 hours. I kept the receipt. On the second tie rod that I removed, uh, you can't really tell from the camera, but the bolt is actually starting to crack. So I'm going to take that back to O'Reilly tomorrow and either ask for a refund or a replacement tool. We'll see what happens, and I'll update you. Moving over to the car, uh, here's the finished work if you want to focus in on it. I didn't break anything, I've got the cotter pins in, everything is torqued to spec except what I said last night trying to get the uh, torque up here to 100 foot pounds. Now today, I worked on this side of the car and I did not put the spindle on on purpose couple of reasons why. The brake line that goes here and snakes around and goes back to the proportioning valve which is right to the right inside the fender well here. Someone had rounded off the head of the brake line. Not me. Uh, someone before me. And that brake line came off pretty easy. So I'll be working on the proportioning valve. It's got to come out anyway. I'm hoping I don't have to replace all the hard brake lines in the car. We'll see. So, I'll wrap up here. I'll talk a little bit about the grease seal. Uh, this is the grease seal for the new rotor. And if you look, it's, it's typical of most wheel bearing seals. You have your rubber seal here and it caps down like that. What's not typical is it's got a pretty long dust boot here coming out of the seal. So again, another trip to O'Reilly Auto Parts to get their wheel bearing uh, kit and grease seal tools. And when I showed the counter guy that, he went to get the tool for me to wrench, he said, that's not going to work. Uh, they have no tool to put this grease seal on that would accommodate this big rubber boot. And I said, well, what do you have that's going to work? Nothing. And I said, well, I'm just going to walk around the store. And I walked up and down the aisles four or five times, and then all of a sudden, I had an idea. So, for $2.80 some odd cents, I got this exhaust flange adapter. And if you look, it fits perfectly. I don't know if you can see inside but I'm not even damaging the rubber boot. So the plan is, is once I get the inner bearing packed, get the grease seal down, little block of wood, hammer it in, should work. Guys at O'Reilly were actually impressed. They were passing this around and passing the seal around and they were saying, wow, you just invented a new tool. So maybe I can sell these on eBay for $49.99, we'll see. <laughs> That's it for now, and next week, the goal is next weekend to try to get the proportioning valve off and get the master cylinder out of the car. Wish me luck, I'll update you then. Welcome back to Project Beep Beep on the Average Guys restoration blog. 
Saturday morning, weekend number two of the disc brake conversion. My camera crew is still in bed, so it's just me. Uh, you can see in this box, there's basically the majority of the brake system. Uh, the old master cylinder still leaking caustic brake fluid there in the pan. I'm learning now that nothing's easy on this car. Uh, the proportioning block, I had to do major surgery and just cut the brake lines off with a bolt cutter. Uh, they were frozen, PB blaster, heated it with a torch, PB blaster. Uh, all I did was just end up, even though I used a flare nut wrench, just round it off each nut. So, bad news there. I have to order a brake line kit this weekend for the car. Good news is the company N-Line Tube actually makes a pre-bent kit of every brake line for the car. Not too expensive, about $165. So, moving on, you can see I used a turkey baster and pan to suck out as much brake fluid as I could from the old master cylinder. And the new master cylinder, I still call it a General Motors style. There's the adapter plate to get it to the firewall and then you reuse the old push rod to the master cylinder. So the shield is on the car. This is the passenger side. These are the two uh, holes that were sort of misdrilled. I used a rat tail file and uh, just egged them out a little bit, maybe just a 32nd of an inch on these two, and the shield mounted. So for today, I'm going to go ahead since I, I basically I'm out of parts to do until I get the brake lines. So on the driver's side we'll go ahead and get the steering knuckle spindle on. We'll get the shield on. And if I feel up to it then I'll go ahead and pack the wheel bearings, get the, get the rotors on and mount the calipers. So I'll update you either later today or Sunday night. Thanks. Welcome to Project Geek Beat, the average guy's restoration blog. Just playing my favorite song there on the stereo. This is weekend number two of Project Beat Beat's front disc brake conversion. And I do feel like an average guy. Uh, the process has been slow, uh, but I, I am making progress. Uh, this is the passenger side, rotors on, I just test fit the caliper, I laid it on there, there's no pads. As you can see, uh, brake line is still not connected. I didn't do the cotter pin yet, I'm still kind of test fitting. I, I will finish this up, this will go pretty quick on this side and I'll, I'll, get, the, I'll get the pads on, I'll get the caliper mounted and maybe even mount the uh, banjo line going up for the brake line. Over to the driver's side. I'm pretty much ready to do the bearings and the rotor. Uh, this brake line, I think I explained in my last video, it was rounded off and of course every line on the proportioning block is rounded off. So that's kind of a showstopper. I'll have to order some pre-bent lines from Inline Tube Company tonight. You can see here, master cylinder is gone, lines are gone. I'm ready for the new master cylinder. A little bit of a slowdown this weekend was the bearing race, the way it's seated, the inner wheel bearing, the way it's seated into the rotor. And after a bunch of back and forth cryptic emails, 
with Dr. Differential, who I purchased this kit from, it seems the bevel on the bearing race that came with the rotors wasn't, I guess, as correct as the ones that came with the Temkin uh, bearings. Luckily, my buddy at the local friendly neighborhood brake shop on a Saturday afternoon for a whopping $10 punched out the bearing races and pressed in the correct ones. So, minor setback, but I'm still moving ahead. I think I explained the General Motors style master cylinder that's going to be going in uh, as the replacement. It's a 15 16 bore. And I came up with some ideas here. As you can see, my friend is holding the adapter plate. So, the adapter plate goes together like this, and then you have uh, what replaces the mounting studs to go through the firewall. This particular nut on the car, uh, we actually, I, I've read on the forum, about 90% of the people on the Mopar forum leave this off. And I had to contort myself, I used a distributor hold down wrench, uh, a couple of U-joints, a couple of extenders, uh, a bunch of different well sockets to get this off the car. Probably took me 45 minutes to get this one off the car. I didn't want to drop the steering column like a lot of people recommended. So, I'll run this past my mechanical engineers where I work. I bought some for $2.99. Uh, I'm going to use them as standoffs, but they're actually uh, zinc roller bearings. So I think what I'm going to do is place that zinc roller bearing on there to extend out this area such that I'll at least see the nut next to the steering column. And I might be able to just get an open end wrench and just come in on the side and give it three or four turns and that's all I'll need. And I'll, I'll still have this on and the other studs. We'll see. I had to try it for three dollars. It was an idea that hit me this morning when I got out of bed. Not sure if there's going to be an update next weekend, uh, but I am going to order the brake lines. And I've also decided that I'm going to replace everything that brake fluid flows through. So on the back I'm going to order the rear rubber brake line that goes to the T. And I'm going to go ahead and, and order from Rock Auto some new Raybestos rear wheel cylinders. I might as well just shotgun the brake system. That way I'll feel pretty good about it when I get it together. So hopefully in two weeks I'll give you an update.